But before we start today, uh, we'll quickly go through the risk disclaimer, as always. So trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Before deciding to trade foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, level of experience and risk appetite. There is a possibility that you may sustain a loss of some or all of your investment and therefore you should not invest much the money you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. So today, um, today's host will be Jakob Brahimov and myself. For those of you who don't know Jakob, he's a professional trader, trainer, and the author of an upcoming Forex Not for Dummies Traders Journal. He has been nominated as the best trader of the year by multiple independent media sources since he has joined the Forex industry in 2005. Hi guys, this is me over here and Ed, thank you very much for introducing and uh, thanks for having me here today. Thanks Jakob. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Edmundas Paul Vlaovicius and I'm a senior financial analyst at A2Z Forex and the head of A2Z Financial Tools. I'm also an ongoing social entrepreneur and I have been working with professional traders, traders and brokers. So uh, starting off today, we'll quickly go through the previous week's recap just so all of us would be on the same page. So really what happened uh, on Tuesday, the United Kingdom announced a snap election and it will be held in June. While now, as we speak, fr uh, we have French presidential elections with Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron leading the way, which means that we'll probably see, well, we'll most likely see a second round of the elections in, on May 7th. So from today's developments, you can really expect uh, Euro to gap down on Monday. Would you, Jakob, would you like to add anything? I was actually at, uh, commenting about it a little earlier today when we had a short uh, breakfast. Uh, we sometimes have a breakfast with uh, bankers and uh, overall institutional traders here in Amsterdam. And today when we were uh, having the, the, the traders breakfast uh, in Amsterdam, we, we commented about it. And one of the funny comments came out was about, or well, was actually commenting about uh, George Soros. You know uh, Soros, correct? And you know what he is famous for. One thing he's famous for uh, is not about the Central European University nowadays, as he's being commented about, but he's famous for breaking the Bank of England, where uh, in the history where he saw the opportunity that the British pound used to be uh, basically pegged on the Deutsche Mark, the, the, Germ uh, the infamous German currency. And uh, it was, it was basically being managed uh, as what it is uh, happening right now in Swiss franc and, and so on. Yeah, and he saw the opportunity and he, he understood that by putting the Bank of England under pressure, he would basically break that peg. And indeed what he did, and there were other uh, investors and traders jumping in the trade and eventually, you know, uh, the BOE tried to hike the interest rate from 10% to 12%. It didn't work out and they gave up. Uh, he made over a billion dollar profit in one day. And I'm convinced personally that there is a similar opportunity coming up. And it's not about the euro that I'm commenting about, but it's about the safe haven assets. In Europe, there is pretty much one safe haven asset and that's the Swiss franc, correct? Well, that's, uh, at least what's happening. Each time there is an issue in Europe, any kind of an issue, People start selling the British pounds and selling the euros, Norwegian krona, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they dive into the Swiss franc. Indeed, this is also what happened in in January 15th as well, uh, 2015, where uh, we all know the, uh, at least if you are in the market for more than two three years, you remember that they being referred as the Black Swan event of the forex industry. So. I know I'm talking a little fast and a little excited about it because I'm indeed excited about the opportunities this kind of uh, market brings us. And nonetheless, I believe the today's election in France, it's the first round, it's not going to be breaking the, the SNB, but the final result, may we see the fact that uh, Le Pen is 
or could win the elections, we might end up seeing the SMB bro being broken and we might end up seeing that billion dollar trade coming up again. But again, it would be on the Swiss franc side. So this could Back be so this could be like shaping towards Frexit, wouldn't it? With Le Pen. Uh, well, I, I don't really mind if it happens or not. I'm not a political analyst, right? I'm a trader. All I care is about the opportunities the market really pushes for, uh, for us. And may we see any kind of threat from the political standpoint, we will see people abandoning euro, people abandoning, abandoning the British pound and going for a safe haven asset, which is Swiss franc. And another safe haven asset is, of course, gold. Or uh, nowadays there is a third one, and that's, uh, that's the Bitcoin, correct? So we will see a massive, massive uh, volatility in these three instruments that I just mentioned about. Once again, I don't really mind whether uh, Brexit happens. I don't really mind whether Frexit even uh, comes to the table or not. I'm not a political analyst, and I don't really... Uh, frankly speaking, I don't really care about it. Uh, all I care about is uh, what opportunities I can catch in the market and, and ride with it. Thanks, Jacob. Fun fact, fun fact I think uh, Mr. Soros is not even allowed in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? actually, well, I believe it's to some extent true. Uh, so, having covered that, uh, some fundamentals to watch out for this upcoming week will be will have BOG and ECB meetings on Thursday. So both central banks are expected to leave rates unchanged at negative 0.1 and 0% respectively. However, you know, given uh, that uh, Japanese yen is a safe haven asset and the uh, current safe haven flows to the Japanese yen make life quite difficult for the Japanese policymakers. So we might expect some uh, lower targets or overall dovish uh, language uh, at the BOG meeting. While looking at ECB, uh, on Friday Draghi said that um, even though the very substantial accommodation is still necessary in the uh, Eurozone, uh, but that deflation is not being an ongoing con concern anymore. And we'll finish the week on Friday with uh, first GDP releases from the US and the UK. So overall really an interesting and fundamentally interesting week given the elections, etc. Is there anything Jakub, you would like to add on these? Well, I want to just comment about the last Friday uh, comment about the GDP releases. Uh, in the history, GDP releases uh, tend to give us massive opportunities, and the opportunities come uh, come with a massive, uh, you know, significant risk as well. And indeed, uh, in, you know, although I may be uh, one of the best, if not the best, uh, forex trainer in the world, uh, I also make mistakes personally. And historically, my worst trade ever uh, that I can recall happened uh, on one of those dates, uh, and I uh, I can basically remember it as the. 29th of February 2012 event and it was about the GDP figure as well and I ended up making a loss of 20 something percent the biggest loss I've ever sustained personally uh, so one uh, sent commentary on my side is that when the market offers you an opportunity take it and run it but understand the risks involved especially if it is a fundamental uh, announcement to bear uh, the risk as well as the opportunity in mind, never just dive in the market with just, you know, GDP is going to give me the opportunity of trading ABC or giving me the opportunity of making, uh, let's say, $100,000 in profit, but always understand what it is that you're putting at the stake, what it is that you, you might want to put it in return for what you want to get. And that's, uh, that's the one cent opinion from my, cent, uh, my side. And I believe that the Friday event will bring the market uh, the, the much needed volatility that we are looking for. And it's not just going to be on British pound or the US dollar, but it will be across the board on every kind of uh, GBP or uh, USD related uh, tradable instrument. Thanks, Jacob. 
as if we don't have a quite high volatility at the moment from the all the elections and everything else. <laughs> well, the market, uh, you know, uh, surprisingly, the market is not as volatile as it should be uh, otherwise. Yeah, if, noticed. If it was in 2000, uh, let's say 14, and any one of these events that we are seeing nowadays would happen, we, could, we probably would, would have seen a 10,000 pip movement in the market on that specific instrument. Like as an example, this week's uh, bridge pound, or last week's actually, the bridge pound related event where the, the prime minister announced the snap election for the UK, it only gave a minor market movement, uh, at least for, for what it is. And if it was to happen in 2014, this event would have brought the market at least 10,000 pips or so. So we are running at, a, at more or less 60% steam right now. <laughs> Nicely said. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jacob. So having covered fundamentals, um, we'll today, from a technical perspective, we'll look into gold, Euro USD, GBP USD, and two commodity pairs, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and Australian dollar, US dollar. So switching to our trading platform and starting off with gold, uh, top to bottom analysis. We'll first look at the weekly time frame, and from it, uh, from indicators perspective, we can see that bullish trend remains, remains to prevail. We have MECD bars forming. Um, above neutral zero level and even though we last week we had a bearish candle the bar closed higher than the previous one while our uh, weekly oscillator is sloping upwards also indicating uh, bullishness in the market from daily time frame um, we had uh, well our weekly, uh, our daily oscillator is somewhat indicating um, possible correction. However, our daily MACD remains to uh, form bars above the uh, daily signal bar uh, signal line, indicating that the um, that overall trend remains uh, dictated from the weekly time frame, and it is bullish as is confirmed by 20 and 100 moving uh, moving averages, which are sloping nicely uh, to the upside. So what does this tell to us? Uh, basically, as we expected uh, last week, the pri uh, we looked into a possible correction from either Fibonacci 50% or 38.2% uh, retracement levels. And indeed, this is what happened last week. The, uh, the pair, uh, sorry, the gold, gold reversed from the expected 50% level and has reached our first target at 61.8% at 1,279. So what can we expect for now? Uh, given, the, given the ongoing strong bullish trend, we can, um, well, I would not advise to jump into short uh, opportunities now, but if, you're, if you have been shorting gold from last week, as we looked, you can still expect um, you could you could still target uh, towards seventy percent. At any scale? I, I if I were to re, uh, you know look into this uh, tradable instrument and understand the the risks involved in the market, uh, you know, steamed by the French election, I think it would be really silly to to short gold at the moment, yeah, or even keep. Uh, short gold, although you would you would have been uh, selling it at a higher high. Uh, however, though, uh, can I ask you a question? Where do, where would you recommend or where would you be looking as Edmund does to to long gold from? Basically, the, my next point was to instead of going for short opportunities, as you just mentioned, instead look for a possible buy opportunity at approximately one point twenty uh, one thousand two hundred six uh, sixty nine as a best risk reward um, option. All right. Uh, if, we, if we really go back, uh, kind of zoom out a little bit, Edmund, I think that the best sell opportunity, uh, well, buy opportunity, I'm not looking or considering any kind of sell on gold until we see any kind of uh, update. So basically, if we look at the previous uh, 
high of the market, uh, I'm, I'm looking of the wave that we are looking at, that's exact level. You can see that the, the highest high more or less falls onto 1262 level. Correct. So, so that's the level that uh, I believe we should be looking into, you know, long opportunities in the market. And uh, until 1345 level, I don't see any, personally, I don't see any kind of uh, bearish opportunity in the market. Of course, there will be some correction waves coming here and there, but it's supposed to be just a correction wave, as the name says. Correct. Opinion. So with that, we can then switch to EURUSD. Again, top to bottom uh, from weekly time frame, um, we can see that EURUSD remains in an overall uh, bullish correction indicated by weekly MACD, which forms bars towards the neutral zero level, as well as we have our weekly oscillator somewhat forming a bottom. However, from daily time frame, um, we had we have, as we can see, uh, their pair remains to more or less fluctuate. Uh, but from price action perspective, we have formation of higher highs and higher lows, but in an overall in an overall bearish trend. So therefore, uh, I would we might still expect from technical perspective some further bullish. Um, bullish price movements just to finish the co possible correction but given the fundamental developments uh, as you can recall we, we said that basically you should expect um, a possible well it's a likely a euro gap down so we might see the pair fall either on 0 1.068 or even lower like 1.0645 but from there on, we're risking half of the usual entry. We might look to uh, buy Euro USD, possibly from either Fibonacci 88% uh, retracement, uh, a custom 88% retracement level at 1.066, uh, or uh, if we see a confirmation from price action on daily time frame, we might possibly look at 1.065 for some long opportunities. And uh, just uh, re recalling back on our previous week's an analysis, we looked for a bullish opportunity from either 88 or 100 percent, and we had a, a confirmation on hourly time frame, which I would, uh, which we'll be able to look after today's question and answer session. This is something that I uh, I'd like to do with if if you if someone from the audience would like to view the confirmations of last week. Uh, then we'll be able to look into it after question and answer session. So with that said, we had a nice 130 pips opportunity. Jakob, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I, I'm looking on, on the euro, of course, supported by fundamentals as well. Uh, when I look at the last two candles on daily time frame, those of you who ever joined uh, any of my trainings, uh, you remember I, I quite often talk about something called sword candle. And if I combine these two candles, I get a very nicely shaped bearish sword candle. Uh, that being said, if I go on hourly time frame, maybe Edmund, as you would like to go on hourly time frame, and take a look at it, try to see a pattern in here and the pattern that i'm looking for is a head and shoulder pattern uh, the the left one has already been accomplished we have the head and the next one that i'm looking for is a hundred pips more or less drop uh, from the current level that we are sorry actually 78 pips uh, more or less drop uh, from the current level so that being said, uh, if you really put that level onto daily time frame, you will see that it also corresponds with with one of your moving averages, uh, at least. Here. There it is. Exactly. So bear that in mind. Uh, of course, uh, I am actually more bullish on euro dollar than uh, I was before nowadays. 
However, uh, I, I don't want to trade anything that I want to see, but I want to trade what the market is telling me. So, and at the moment, at least until the 1.0630 level, uh, 35 level, which is the, the level Edmundas is uh, showing right now, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really dare even doing anything else uh, until those levels. Sorry. We might even Completely. see a gap to uh, to that level. It's quite possible, actually. Uh, but I'm not a wizard to really talk about it, right? That's true. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jakob, for your comments. Sure. So we'll move on to GBP USD, and uh, as you can see, differently from other um, other pairs, I don't have uh, a Fibonacci here, but really the main the main thing that I looked, well, we looked last week was the narrowing badge uh, formed on the weekly and daily time frames, and really what we looked for was a possible uh, was a breakout either uh, to the downside or to the upside, and uh, this is actually what happened. And to be more precise, uh, what I advised you was to look for a breakout, but only buy or sell. Uh, the correction back towards uh, one of the uh, trend lines, meaning if we have a bullish breakout, then uh, don't buy the exact breakout. Look for a correction back towards um, back towards the downward sloping trend line, and only then buy. It. And I really love when the market really acts as expected, and this is exactly what happened uh, during on Tuesday. This was the breakout. This was the correction, and this was your opportunity of 300 plus pips. So this was this development really brought us some nice profits since last week. As for this week, uh, we see the pair uh, touched the nearby sub, uh, resistance level, and overall, overall, Jakob, would you like to add anything? Since uh, from last week's opportunity, uh, I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't see any. I have a little bit of controversial view on uh, on cable. Right. Uh, my my controversial view, I haven't proved it to myself yet. It's just a view. That's why I, I I'm not really gonna give exact levels or so. I like how you put it, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> Uh, you know, when you when you cannot ag uh, agree with yourself, it's it becomes your personal controversial view, right? Yeah, but then you can read it as well, right? <laughs> yeah. So my view is that you know the British kind of voted for the Brexit, correct? Uh, and the market took it as a bearish opportunity, depreciated the uh, the pound. However, if the the French really pushes for Le Pen's uh, victory. Does that mean that uh, you know the uh, the market was wrong and uh, indeed uh, Europe should be broken? And does that mean that uh, it should push the the pound the other way around? So therefore, I do kind of uh, controversially to myself, my inner uh, belief, think that there is even possibility for for the market to see bullish gap in the market for uh, for for the cable. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, uh, the the level that you have highlighted previously as a resistance level is a is a swing resistance level. So if that level is broken above, uh, the market should go on a on a strong direct uh, bullish development. Uh, and I also shared something on A to Z forex myself and uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Moss, also shared an analysis on it uh, too. I do believe that there is a uh, there is further bullish opportunity on on the cable. However, that uh, opportunity for me only comes from 1.2666 level, and it's a very funny level. Uh, I am not really fun of the six number, but it comes from that level, and it only gets to be accomplished at 1.3060 level. So it's a wave, by the way, based on Fibonacci waves. Uh, you know what I do in general. It's based on true Fibonacci waves from 1.2666 to 1.3065. That's the overall uh, level. And it's more or less uh, actually 400 pips opportunity in the market. And you can even put these levels from the simple 
sub support uh, resistance supply demand perspective you will see that these these are the levels where the support resistance are being formed these are the levels that uh, strong resistance uh, strong demand turns into strong supply etc so that's what i would be looking for in either uh, occasion if we see the market touching 1.3065 i would look into buy uh, sell opportunities if we see the market touching to 1.2666 level i would start looking for uh, buy opportunities thanks Jacob. I hope that's clear, guys. If anything, you can always leave a comment and we'll get back to it uh, during the question and answer session. So having covered GBP USD, uh, we'll now switch to the two remaining commodity currencies. And my personal outlook for the both pairs is a bit more cloudy uh, than for, let's say, gold. In any case, uh, looking at the Australian dollar, US dollar from weekly time frame, the pair remains to trade in an overall uh, consolidation uh, level, well, consolidation range, a uh, quite large one. And at the moment, the pair seems to be reversing from the top, uh, from the upper um, consolidation uh, level at approximately uh, 0 0.777. From uh, indicators perspective, this is more or less, uh, this view is more or less confirmed. Uh, the MACD remains to fluctuate around uh, a neutral zero point and at the moment forming bars below the signal line, as well as we have our uh, weekly uh, stochastic oscillator sloping towards the downside, confirming uh, the ret ret well, correction or ret ret retracement from the upper level and indicating some, um, some bearishness. However, from um, SMA perspective, we have some kind of support uh, from 20 uh, day moving average. Uh, looking for a better view on daily time frame, we can see that the current uh, development is also supported on the daily time frame. This is indeed similar to what we have uh, on weekly time frame from indicators perspective. Uh, both oscillators are sloping towards the downside and both MACDs are forming bars, uh, bars below a neutral zero level. So with that, we might expect some further uh, bearishness, uh, further bearish price action. What we looked uh, for next week were a correction either from 38.2 or 23.6. And indeed, this is what we got. The market reversed for from 38.2% uh, retracement level at 0 0.75, 0 0.76. And we had a nice 100 pips from Australian dollar, which is quite, uh, quite a lot. And a retracement from our first target at 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. So with that said, we could possibly look for um, further uh, Correct, uh, correct, well, further bullish correction towards um, towards 0 0.7566. And from there, possibly, we might enter the market once again and um, go back uh, short again for towards 61.8%. And for our final, look for our final target as Fibonacci 76.4% at 0 0.742. That covers my side. Uh, Jakob, would you like to say anything? Yeah, I have also a differentiated outlook for it. I believe that the market last week attempted a fake bearish breakout. Uh, I'm referring to the 100 uh, moving average that you have out there. And the market uh, kind of broke below it and started to go against it again. If we go on hourly time frame, we will see that the market really is attempting to form a inverse head and shoulder formation once again. Uh, the, the last part you will see, let me actually try to get uh, your uh, screen if I could. All right. So I, I, I hope I'll be, yeah, there it is. Uh, this is the level that I'm referring to the, the market being as a, uh, as the head, this is the, the, the left shoulder and this is the right shoulder. In, this is a, not a traditional head, on, head and shoulder that you might be used to. This is an inverse one. 
So basically the way you, you calculate how the market would be moving when such opportunity arises, basically from here, here is 70 pips market development. So according to the theory, the market should be basically moving from the, this level, which is the, the shoulder, another uh, 60, 70 pips, more or less, uh, and that falls into 0, 075, uh, 90 something level. My, my opinion personally would be, if you are long in the Aussie dollar, keep it until 0 0.7187 uh, level. Uh, that's from Fibonacci perspective. I have also drawn something different a little bit. If I could go back to weekly time frame, uh, I need to zoom in over here. So if we were to really combine these uh, market developments uh, with the remaining of the activities, I would, uh, if Ed would not really mind, I would change this to over here. And that would be the, the true Fibonacci wave that I would be really going for. And that uh, true Fibonacci wave for me uh, would give the following uh, opportunities. You can see that the market really bounced off the 61.8%. And the level that I just mentioned, uh, rising to 0 0.75, uh, 87 level, it is, it's just one pip below the 61.8%. Uh, however, if we still combine these two together, we will see that the market from there could bounce further down and further down I'm referring to 161.8% Fibonacci wave and that falls into 0 0.73 uh, 45 level overall and uh, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's an opportunity to, to talk about or to consider. Back to you Ed. Thanks Jacob, thanks for giving me back my computer. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, 73, correct? Uh, 0 0.73 level for bearish opportunity, long-term bearish opportunities. Correct. Okay, so this goes past uh, my uh, initial level, but nonetheless, all right. Thanks for your outlook. That's, that's an overall, uh, you know, every trader has a different outlook. Yeah, it doesn't mean I'm right or you're wrong. Uh, for, for those of uh, our followers here right now, it doesn't mean I, I am right, it doesn't mean Edmundas is right. It means we have different uh, outlook. Uh, the level that I mentioned is the final swing target. It's not, uh, it's not just a intraday, it's not just, uh, just a weekly or daily uh, target. I am expecting this level to be accomplished within uh, probably within six weeks or so time period. So you, you may not see it next week or the following week, but by the end of May, we should be seeing something uh, showing results. Well, but again, this level that I mentioned is only applicable if we see a proper reversal from 61.8% Fibonacci retracement zone. And that's at the 0 0.7387 level that I mentioned about for the current bullish target. If it doesn't happen, then uh, my analysis needs to be uh, relooked. Right. If if we have the uh, confirmation, uh, if the prior price will reach the, this level or it will bounce or it will go past, I'm happy. I'm happy in any case. <laughs> well, by the way, uh, the level that you have mentioned is falling just a little above the 138.2%. It shows that the level that you had was also significant Fibonacci wave. Yeah. Uh, so talking of it, the the levels are correct. Basically, from uh, overall market development or my, my true Fibonacci wave theory perspective, from 61.8%, the market generally goes to 88%. It needs to have some kind of correction or, or uh, support from that level. Uh, and that correction or support could rise back to 61.8% and then go to 138.2, from there to 110, and from 110 to 161.8. So it shows that the level you have is likely to be uh, reacting properly and, and even the 110% the is likely to, to react to uh, as, a, as the following to be resistance level. I say to be because it's not uh, anything right now. Great. 
All right, and we'll, we'll finish today's um, today's outlook with New Zealand dollar, US dollar. So from the weekly time frame, we see well the pair has possibly went back into the bearish mode following a quite long uh, bullish correction. I'm referring to this uh, well to this bearish uh, continuation following a pos uh, following the. Um, the overall bullish um, move that started back in the 2014. So from closer perspective, uh, from, da from daily time frame, our indicators are overall mixed. And uh, this is indeed actually what's happening on the weekly time frame when the price is between 20 and 100 moving average which, uh, as Jakob calls it, uh, is, is named uh, MA Sandwich. And we have the same, uh, the same MA Sandwich on daily time frame, which basically, which implies that erratic price action shouldn't be um, unexpected. You shouldn't be surprised by some random uh, price movements. And if I would just uh, switch to hourly time frame to illustrate that, this is indeed what we happened last week when the price was really jumping up and down uh, almost the whole week. So from our daily time frame, uh, last week we looked for either a correction from um, from 0 0.703 or from Fibonacci 50% at 0 0.706. And indeed, market reversed here, and it reached our first target at uh, 20 SMA, from which it bounced back, um, re really as expected, given the MA sandwich. So, with overall mixed uh, indicators, and given the MA sandwiches, I wouldn't really be comfortable saying to long, uh, to sh either short or long. Um, um, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, instead possibly go for uh, hourly time frame and maybe look for possible opportunities at, um, at Fibonacci 50%, which is at 0 0.706. This should be taken as a, pos as a resistance level. Then another uh, resistance is at uh, just at the current level, while our support, uh, support levels lie on Fibonacci 76.4 at 0 0.6697 and at custom Fibonacci 88% at 0 0.693. Jakob, would you like to say anything? Yeah, I, I, I actually believe that there is a, still the correlation existing uh, between New Zealand dollar and Aussie dollar. So I'll keep my opinion uh, very similar. I do believe that the market is going to start uh, today with some kind of, uh, or tonight, with some kind of bearishness. However, for tomorrow, overall, it should be bullish. And that bullishness should be starting as of the 0 0.69, uh, 90 something level. So let's say 0 0.70 level. That's a psychological level overall. Uh, and from there onwards, the target should remain uh, well, on, uh, on bullish uh, direction, uh, and that bullish direction that I'm referring to is uh, is at least rising to 0 070 70 level. Let me just uh, actually 0 070 70 level more or less is uh, over here. Basically, I'm referring to the daily hundred uh, moving average. And uh, the reason why I believe that it, it could still go down is because uh, the market really hasn't uh, set itself out of the moving average sandwich, as we uh, quite often discuss. Uh, until this level is broken out, we nobody really can really discuss about uh, any direction in the market. The only thing that we can really comment on it is because of the MACD, which I'm not really always fond of using it. If we were to, however, uh, to utilize it on MACD, we see this divergence. And also a very similar thing, uh, if you really combine it 
could be seen over here as well. I think this is the stochastic uh, that Eddie is using. Correct. So if you if you take a look at it, it, it actually stochastic even is supported by the view that I just uh, put forward. It could possibly come down, where stochastic would come touch this level and then bounce up as we discuss. Uh, the big the long term picture, however, is that it should be touching or it should be targeting 0 0.71, which is 38.2% uh, Fibonacci level Edmund has, has outlined. Back to you, Edmund. Thanks, Jacob. So, with that said, uh, we have covered today's um, technical and fundamental outlook. Today's uh, webinar was sponsored by Trade.com in association with A2Z Forex. Uh, Trade.com is one of the few A2Z approved brokers which you can find uh, more information about on A2Z Forex uh, directory. So with that said, uh, it's now time for a question and answer session. <laughs> 